What is down, everybody? It's your main course, Little Pancake. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are learning again. You guys really liked learning the last time, so we're going to continue to learn. Because what else is there to do? Today, we're I'm kind of just re-recording this, because I recorded this same topic yesterday, but I didn't like how it turned out. So we're doing it again. What I did was, I just picked a random element, right? On the periodic table of elements, right? A random atom with a random number of protons and neutrons and electrons and a random atomic mass and all that jazz. So the metal that we are reading about on Wikipedia, of course, is tungsten. Now tungsten is a metal, it's an element, and it's interesting. So I already kind of read through all this yesterday, but we're going to read through it again. I'm going to feel like it's kind of helpful if I read through it beforehand and then I kind of know what points I want to hit. Let's just let's just get started. Tungsten or wolfram. First three words I didn't know that tungsten also was called wolfram. So pretty cool. Tungsten or wolfram is a chemical element with the symbol W the and atomic number 74. That means it has 74 protons which is pretty big for an atom. Tungsten is a rare metal found naturally on Earth almost exclusively as compounds with other elements. So that means it's always combined with other elements. That dog's gonna keep walking around my room, isn't she? It was identified as a new element in 1781 and first isolated as a metal in 1783. Its important ores include scheelite and wolframite, the latter lending the element its alternate name. Now this was probably one of the most shocking facts to me, just because I'm, I live in the United States. Like, this is like, what, five years? Yeah, five years after the United States got independence from Britain or whatever. In my mind, this kind of stuff didn't start yet. <laughs> you know? But like, they were finding elements and isolating isotopes and stuff like that way back then, and that that's that's crazy to me, because I... Stuff didn't start till 1776, but You know what I mean? The free element is remarkable for its robustness, just like me. Especially the fact that it has the highest melting point of all known elements. Yeah, yeah, the highest melting point of all known elements. That's pretty cool. Melting at 3,422 degrees Celsius. 6,192 degrees Fahrenheit, 3,695 degrees Kelvin. It also has the highest boiling point, which makes sense, at 5,930 degrees Celsius, 10,706 degrees Fahrenheit. That is wild. Its density is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter, comparable with that of uranium and gold. So, very dense. Very dense, very Polycrystalline tungsten is an intrinsically brittle and hard material under standard conditions when uncombined, making it difficult to work into metal. However, pure single crystalline tungsten is more ductile and can be cut with a hard steel hacksaw. So we see things that include single crystalline tungsten in them. It's the single crystalline is what's used to form into different alloys and stuff like that with steel and kind of strength and things like that. Tungsten occurs in many alloys which have numerous applications including incandescent light bulb filaments, x-ray tubes, electrodes in gas tungsten arc welding, super alloys, and radiation shielding. Tungsten's hardness and high density make it suitable for military applications in penetrating projectiles. Tungsten compounds are often used as industrial catalysts. Characteristics, physical properties. In its raw form, tungsten is a hard steel gray metal that is often brittle and hard to work. Purified monocrystalline tungsten retains its hardness, which exceeds that of many steels, and becomes malleable enough that it can be worked easily. It is worked by forging, drawing, or extruding, but is more commonly formed by sintering. What is that? Process of compacting and forming a solid mass of materials by pressure or heat without melting it to the point of liquefaction. Interesting, I didn't know that was a thing. Highest melting point, lower, lowest vapor pressure, and highest tensile strength. Hmm. 
Tungsten has the lowest coefficient of thermal expansion, tendency of matter to change its shape, area, volume, and density in response to a change in temperature, usually not including phase transitions. Interesting. The low thermal expansion and high melting point and tensile strength of tungsten originate from strong metallic bonds formed between tungsten atoms by the 5D electrons. Alloying small quantities of tungsten with steel greatly increases its toughness. So that's probably like the main uh, use of tungsten that I would think is like combining it with just regular steel to strengthen it as a as an alloy. We don't need to read about, read about all these numbers, isotopes, not important chemical properties. Tungsten is mostly non-reactive element. Okay, so if I put it in a bucket of Pepsi, it probably will not explode. All right. I don't know why I say bucket instead of bottle. Bottle probably would have made more sense there. It does not react with water, is immune to attack by most acids and bases, and does not react with oxygen or air at room temperature. At elevated temperatures, it reacts with oxygen to form the trioxide compound tungsten 6, WO3. It will, however, react directly with fluorine at room temperature to form tungsten 6 fluoride. WF6, a colorless gas. At around 250 degrees Celsius, it will react with chlorine or bromine, and under certain hot conditions, will react with iodine. Finely divided tungsten is pyrophoric. A substance is pyrophoric if it ignites spontaneously in air below 54 degrees Celsius. Interesting. So if you like finely divide tungsten, it'll just blow up. So that's kind of interesting that it's not really conductive like it doesn't it's not affected by many other elements to where it would you know react to them you know that's cool we're gonna skip that history i'm a big history fan in 1781 carl scheel discovered a new acid tungstic acid could be made from scheelite the scheel and toburn bergman suggested that it might be possible to obtain a new metal by reducing this acid in 1783, Jose and Fausto Elhuyar found an acid made from wolframite. This was identical to tungsten acid. Later that year, at the Royal Basque Society, and that sounds like a place I would not want to go. That sounds like a, pla a good place to get murdered. The Royal Basque Society. The brothers succeeded in isolating tungsten by reducing of the acid with charcoal, and they were credited with the discovery of the element, why it's called wolfram. The strategic value of tungsten came to notice early in the 20th century. British authorities acted in 1912 to free the Karak mine from the German-owned Cumbrian Mining Company, uh, and during World War I, restricted German access elsewhere. In World War II, tungsten played a more significant role in background political dealings. Portugal, as the main European source of the element, was put under pressure from both sides because of its deposits of wolframite ore at Panasquatsuwaso. Apologies. Tungsten's desirable properties such as resistance to high temperatures, its hardness and density, and its strengthening of alloys made it an important raw material for the arms industry, both as a consult constituent, that word was difficult for me to say, of weapons and equipment and employed in production itself. Tungsten carbonate cutting tools for machining steel, Notch tungsten is used in more applications such as aircraft and motorsport ballast weights, darts, darts, what? Anti-vibrating tooling and sporting equipment. Uh, tungsten is unique amongst the elements in that it has been the subject of patent proceedings. The U.S. court rejected General Electric's attempt to patent it, overturning U.S. patent 1,082,933, granted in 1913 to William Coolidge. Any relation to Calvin Coolidge? I bet there is. That's weird that it's been patented. <laughs> like, imagine someone just patenting oxygen. Can you stop whining? What the heck? Like, imagine just patenting oxygen. Like, what? That's interesting. But I could see, actually, like, you could patent the process to, like, extract it from the um, tungstenite. That's not what it was called, was it? Wolframite. Like extracting the the raw tungsten from the wolframite, patenting that process, maybe I could see, maybe. Etymology don't care. Occurrence. Tungsten has thus far not been found in nature in its pure form. That's interesting. Instead, tungsten is found mainly in wolframite and scheelite. Wolframite is iron manganese tungstate solid solution of the two minerals furbite and humernite, while scheelite is calcium tungstate. 
Other tungsten minerals range in their level of abundance from moderate to very rare and have almost no economic value. So wolframite and shelite are the are the are the big dogs, right? They're they're the king and the queen of the tungsten world. Interesting. The world's reserve of tungsten are three million two hundred thousand tons. They're located mostly in China, Canada, Russia, Vietnam, and Bolivia. As of 2017, China, Vietnam, and Russia are the leading suppliers with 79,000, 7,200, and 3,100 tons, respectively. Canada has ceased production in late 2015 due to the closure of its sole tungsten mine. Meanwhile, Vietnam has significantly increased its output in the 2010s owing to the major optimization of its domestic refining operations and overtook Russia and Bolivia. So Canada just like mm, said, nah, we're, we're, we're good, we're good. There is a large deposit of tungsten ore on the edge of Dartmoor in the United Kingdom, which was exploited during World War I and World War II. Following increases in tungsten prices, the mine was reactivated in 2014, but ceased activities in 2018. Okay, so they're like, oh, tungsten's expensive, we gotta get our bag, reopen the mine. 2014. Four years later, they were like, okay, this is not going as planned. We have made $13 from this mine, and we have killed millions of animals. <laughs> Extraction, that looks complicated. Applications, here we go. Approximately half of the tungsten is consumed for the production of hard materials, namely tungsten carbonide, carbide, with the remaining major use being in alloys and steels. Less than 10% is used in other chemical compounds. Because of the high ductile brittle transition temperature of tungsten, its products are convenient, conventionally manufactured through powder metallurgy, spark plasma centering, chemical vapor deposition, hot isostatic pressing, and thermoplastic routes. Holy Toledo! Frog man. A more flexible manufacturing alternative is selective laser melting, which is a form of 3D printing and allows creating complex three-dimensional shapes. WC is an efficient electrical conductor, but W2C is less so. WC is used to make wear-resistant abrasives and carbide cutting tools such as knives, drills, circular saw, dies, milling, and turning tools used by the metalworking, woodworking, mining, petroleum, and construction industries. Carbide tooling is actually a metal, uh, ceramic metal com composite, geez, that was hard for me to say, where metallic cobalts act as a binding matrix uh, that hold WC particles in place. Jewelry industry makes rings of centered tungsten carbine and also metallic tungsten. Interesting. So jewelry is made out of it as well. Permanent magnets. Quenched tungsten steel was used for making hard permanent magnets due to its high remanence and coercivity. As noted by John Hopkinson, as early as 1886, the magnetic properties of a metal or an alloy are very sensitive to microstructure. For example, while the element tungsten is not ferromagnetic, but iron is, when it is present in steel in these proportions, it stabilizes the martensite phase, which has greater ferromagnetism than the ferrite phase due to its greater resistance to magnetic domain wall motion. Well, duh. <laughs> tungsten, usually alloyed with nickel, form heavy alloys. It's used in kinetic energy penetrators. As an alternative to depleted uranium, in applications where uranium's radioactivity is problematic, even in depleted form, and where uranium's additional pyrophoric properties are not desired. For example, in ordinary small arms bullets designs to penetrate body armor. Tungsten alloy has been used in shells, grenades, and missiles to create supersonic shrapnel. Germany used tungsten during World War II to produce shells for anti-tank guns designed using the Gerlich squeeze bore principle to achieve very high muscle velocity and enhanced armor penetration from comparatively small caliper and lightweight field artillery. The weapons were highly effective, but a shortage of tungsten used in the shell core caused in part by the Wolfram Crisis limited their use. So the military uses it to like pierce armor is like it's really strong and you can make it so it like it'll pierce armor and it won't like mushroom out when it hits the armor that's interesting that's cool electronics because it retains its strengths at high temperatures and has a high melting point element tungsten is used in many high temperature applications such as light bulbs ray tubes vacuum tube filaments heating elements and rocket engines rocket engine nozzles oh. 
Its high melting point also makes tungsten suitable for aerospace and high temperatures uses, such as electrical heating and welding applications, notably in the gas tungsten arc welding process. So welding, that makes sense because of how heat tolerant it is, it's not gonna melt. So you can pump just flames through it and it won't melt. That's pretty cool. Electrodes, electron microscopes, that's pretty cool. Silicon stuff. X-rays too, you ever get an X-ray? Tungsten has been used. Interesting, nanowires, fusion power, biological role. In soil, here we go. In soil, tungsten metal oxidizes to a tungstate anion. It can be selectively or non-selectively imported by some prokaryotic organisms and may substitute for molybdate in certain enzymes. So. For those of you that don't know, prokaryotic organisms would be um, like bacteria and archaea. So basically think of bacteria, those kinds of organisms, that's what it is. Its effect on the action of these enzymes is in some case inhibitory and in others positive. The soil's chemistry determines how the tungsten polymerizes. Alkaline soils cause monomeric tungstates. Acidic soils cause polymeric tungstates effect on earthworms. Lead has found to be lethal at low levels and sodium tungstate was much less toxic, but the tungstate completely inhibited their reproductive ability. That's kind of crazy that it just, if, if you mm, give worms tungstate, they just can't reproduce. That's wild. That's cool. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's tungsten for you. There it is. I, that, that's got more like stuff than I would have anticipated, like more, um, more stuff, yeah just like more uses like to me tungsten before reading this i would just said tungsten is like used to make metal harder like you put tungsten in steel and the steel's harder you know what i'm saying but now like light bulbs darts uh aerospace stuff electrical stuff it's got a lot of uses it's also weird to me that it's not found in its pure form in nature like just straight tungsten is not found in nature. That's kind of odd to me, because why not? You know, like what What made it so it doesn't, you know? Raises a question. Now you know about tungsten. So now when you're in conversation, you can be like, you know, China's the leading producer of tungsten. And uh, Canada used to be like really high up there, but then they stopped. And so did the UK, the, the EU. They, uh, yeah, they, st they produced quite a bit and then they just stopped. Or you could be like, you know, tungsten's used in that light bulb filament. You can be like, you know, tungsten's used in welding a lot, you know? Fun facts that you can share with your friends. That's what this is about. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Make sure to smash like if you did. I enjoyed making this one. This was really fun. Stay tuned for another one. Let me know if you have anything you want to learn about in the comments. And uh, have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, everyone. And I'll see all y'all later.